children. Wave at me, children. Yes, today is an exciting Sunday that God has given us to come and praise him and worship him. My name is Teacher Hannah and the Lord is my savior. We are going to start with a word of prayer, children. So we put our hearts together, we bow our heads, we close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this day to come and praise you and worship you. We thank you, Lord, we honor you because you have been with us, you have protected us, you have been our Ebenezer God throughout the week. As we start this lesson, may you be with us, may you open our hearts, and may we listen from you. For we pray this in Jesus' holy name, amen. And all God's children say, amen. Yes, so today, children, we are going to remind ourselves about uh, what we learned last Sunday. Last Sunday, we were taught the topic of testing of our faith. We were taught about testing of our faith. And today, children, our topic is betrayal in families, relationships, and drugs. Betrayal in families, relationships, and drugs. And our text today, children, is from the book of Job, second, from verse 9 and 10. What are we supposed to learn today, children? We are supposed to learn that God is worth of worship with no conditions. God is worth of worship with no conditions. And I'm going to tell you a story, children. Story, story. Yes, our story today, children, is about two boys. These two boys were called Peter and Paul. Peter and Paul were great friends and they were also cousins. And it happened that during the holiday, their parents bought them bicycles, very beautiful bicycles. You can see here, this bicycle belonged to Peter and this other bicycle belonged to Paul. They were very excited when their parents bought them these bicycles. And so one day, Peter and Paul decided to go and ride their bicycles outside the compound. And as they were riding their bicycles, unfortunately, Peter's bicycle hit a neighbor's gate. And you know what, children? Peter's bicycle got broken. It crashed completely. And when Peter saw that his bicycle had crashed, he became very sad, very, very sad. And he started crying. He started crying. And when Paul looked back and saw that Peter's bicycle had crashed, he, he also got very sad. And he came up with an idea. He told Peter that you can tell your parents that your bicycle was stolen and you don't even know the person who stole your bicycle. And when Paul thought about it, he decided otherwise. He told Paul, no, I am not going to lie to my parents that my bicycle has been stolen. I am going to tell them the truth, whatever they are going to do to me. And Peter decided not to lie to his parents. 
What do we learn about this story of Peter and Paul children? We learn that our friends and relatives can deceive us and we should not we should be careful not to be deceived. We should be careful not to tell lies because that is sinning against God. We should always do what God wants us to do. And this story, children, is also similar to a story in the Bible. And this is the story of Job and his wife. You remember the story of Job, children? Job was a faithful servant of God. You can see Job here. And you remember that Satan had asked for permission to come and strike Job. And when he came down, he made Job's body to be full of woods and souls. And when uh, Job's body got souls, he was he became very sad and he was in a lot of pain. You can see Job here in a lot of pain. He tore his clothes and wept bitterly. And during that time he was suffering, he went near a, a rubbish pit. And you can see him here with his wife. Job was in a lot of pain and he was suffering. And when his wife looked at him, he, when his wife looked at him, the wife told Job, you can curse God and die. And when uh, Job thought about it, he said, no, I am not going to curse God. I am not going to do anything against God. You can see uh, Job's wife here arguing with him to curse God and die, but Job refused. So this story is also teaching us children so many things. It is teaching us that we should remain faithful to God even in suffering like Job did. We should always remain faithful to God, even in suffering. This story is also teaching us children that we should not follow bad advice from our friends and relatives. We also learn that we should choose our friends wisely to avoid bad company. And they, this saying children that bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. This story is also teaching us children that we should pray to God to help us choose our friends. And finally, this story is teaching us that God cannot tempt us beyond our ability. God cannot tempt us beyond our ability. And with these children, we come to our memory verse of today. And our memory verse is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 39 and verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 39 and verse 1. And I read... <coughs> I will be careful what I do, and I will not let my tongue make me sin. Uh, another version says, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. We can ask ourselves, children, what is to watch? And to watch is to observe keenly or to observe closely. Let us be keen children in everything that we do so that when we are able to know uh, the friends who
who, who may deceive us, the threads who may make us sin. We can also ask ourselves, what is to be ungodly? Ungodly people are the evil people. Evil people, the people who mislead us. Like in the story of Peter and Paul, we found Paul trying to deceive Peter to do the wrong thing. And we can also ask ourselves, what is betrayal? Betrayal is to expose someone and even tell their secret. It is also to deceive. Some friends can pretend to be good when we are with them. Wanajifanya wazuri. Lakini saile hatuko, wanaongea maboma baya juyetu. And we should be keen children so that we do not have friends who mislead us, who make us disobey the word of God. And what is our take home today, children? We have learned that we should learn to obey. We should learn to obey God all the times. We have also learned that we should avoid bad friends. And we have also learned that we should pray to God for wisdom at all times. And with these children, we come to the end of our lesson today. So let us put our hands together, bow our heads, close our eyes and pray. Lord, we come before you again this day. Thank you for the way you have been with us. Thank you for teaching us, O oh God, that we should obey you. We should also be careful of our friends and relatives so that they don't deceive us and make us disobey you. May you be with us throughout the week. May you protect us. We pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye, children, until we meet next Sunday. Praise the Lord. Good morning, boys and girls. Wow, wow. It's another beautiful morning. And we thank God because he has been faithful. I want to thank God for you. You have been well. And we thank God for he has taken us through this journey. And as we continue doing the book of Job, I know we are learning so much. And we thank God for that. Now today, we are going to look at betrayal of families or betrayal in our relationship. The uh, betrayal that happens, it affects our relationship with other people. And now, before we do that, I want us to pray. Let's put our hands together, close our eyes and bow our head. Then we pray. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for watching over us the whole week. And thank you for giving us another opportunity to come and study your word. How we pray that Lord will be with us. You guide us in each and everything that we are going to learn. Open our ears so that we can listen carefully and to you. And we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Yes. Children, children here. I'm saved this morning and I'm happy to be with you and to do this Bible lesson today together with you. As I have told you that we are still continuing with the, uh, uh, the book of Job, and we have been seeing who Job is. We saw Job characters and we said that Job was an upright man, a blameless, a blameless man, a man who loved God and a man who hated evil. And we, last week we looked, at, uh, we looked at testing, being tested, and how we, could, uh, we can stand in the test that we are going through and not do evil. So we learned that uh, we have, we as children, we have the ability 
to do the right thing even when we are suffering. And this takes us to today's lesson, the betrayal in the families. When we talk of betrayal, what are we talking about? Talking about betrayal, it's when somebody reveals sacred things about you. You do something together with a person and then that person will not keep those things within themselves, but they will go out there and start telling other people. And when you hear that, oh, you feel so bad. That is betrayal. Another word that uh, we, I would like us to, 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 to learn or, uh, before we tackle our lesson is to be watchful, to watch. Watch, W-A-T-C-H. What is to watch? To watch is to observe closely. When you want to learn something, you will look closely to it so that you can know what it is. And then the other hard name that you are going to look at, it's ungodly. What is ungodly? When you, you hear people saying that, oh, that person is so ungodly. Or whatever that person is doing is ungodly. We say that that person is evil. He is evil. Whatever that person is doing, it's not a good thing. And so children, our lesson will come from the book of Job, chapter number 2, verse 9 and 10. As now we have a picture of who Job is. Job, we saw he was a rich man. He had a, a family of 10 children, 3 girls, and 7 boys or young men. And they were all dead. They were striking and they all died. Even the animals that Job had, they, were, they all died. But there is one person who didn't die when the bad things were happening to Job. And who is this person? Job's wife. You see, we have Job's wife here. Yes, when all other things and all other people died, Job's wife did not die. And when uh, we looked at last, what we looked at last week, we saw all their previous lessons. We saw that Job, when everything he had was destroyed, the children died, the animals, the camels, and all that, Job had also another challenge. Oh, his skin was full of boils, you know, and he was clashing himself. You know, it was itching. The woods were itching and he could scratch himself. And you know what, boys and girls, he did not scratch himself with his bare hands. No, he used to get something, a broken bottle or plastic that he used to scratch himself with. And when he was doing that, oh, his wife looked at him and told him, eh, Job, atawewe hauko serious. How can you be able to continue trusting this God, yet you know what he has done to you? And then Job looked at the wife. It's like, hey, you, how can you speak like that? You know what you're doing? You're just speaking like a foolish woman. You don't know what you're saying. Job was suffering. Everything he had was gone. And now here he is, lying down with a lot of pain. And again, the only person who could have supported him was his wife. And what did he do? Ah, akamwambia. Sasa ata wewe angaria. Hizi vidoda zote. Na unaendelea tikusema unapenda mungu. How? Mtukane. Ili ukufe na wishe uchu wote wishe. But Job was a faithful person. Job was an upright man. He never said any bad thing to God. He never cast God. Why? Because he loved him. Now children, I want us to relate this story of Job with what is happening in our lives. We know that there are some of us, you have friends, but these friends, you intend to tell them what you are going through. Maybe you are sick, your mommy is sick, or like now the time we had for Corona, 
some of our parents lost their jobs. So they are not working. And then you feel like, oh, this is something that I want to share with my friend. And this friend of yours, when you tell, you tell him or her, decide to go and tell all other people. And you knew that when you tell that person about what your family is going through, he or she will keep that as a secret and he will not tell anybody else, but he will be able to pray with you. So when that person tell, goes out and tells other children about, oh, angaria kina furani, angaria kina joni apo, ati, wow, wan kona shida. You, when that person, when that friend of yours goes out and tells the other children like uh, something like that, you feel betrayed. You feel sad. Why? Because the secret you had given he, uh, him to pray for you, he has taken it to be a public thing. And you will feel bad. This story, what, does, what are we learning from this story? That God is worthy of our worship. Even though we are going through hard times, even if we are struggling with our lives and everything that is surrounding us, we should not cast God. We should not uh, feel downcast. We should not feel sad. No, don't feel sad. Learn to wake up. Learn to worship the Lord. I should also do the same. Job, he did not curse God. Even if the, his wife told him, told him to curse God, he did not curse him. He did not talk bad things about God. What he did, he said that he continued worshiping God. And even for us, no matter what condition you are in, maybe you are sick, maybe you have a sister or a brother who is sick, or a relative, or a neighbor who is sick. You need not to worry. You need not to be angry with God. But we need all of us to stand up and worship God. Why should we worship God? Because God is faithful. And God will always remain faithful. And he will help us to start firm, even when we are struggling children. There's also another thing I want us to, to, to know, that we need to follow God's advice through his word and not advice from any other person. Like now, Job's wife advised Job to curse God. That was a wrong advice. And as children, if you have somebody who advises you to do wrong, please, that is not a good friend. And you should ask God through prayers to give you a good person, a good friend who will be able to advise you or to tell you the good thing that you are supposed to do. And now children, with that one, I want us to look at our bi uh, memory verse from the book of Psalms chapter number 39 verse 1 and this is what it is it says i watch my ways and keep my tongues from sin i will put a muzzle in my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. I want us to repeat it again. It is in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter number 39 and verse 1. And it says, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. Who are the wicked? We looked at these uh, hard words another time, and we said, wicked, they are those bad people. Evil people, they are the ones we call wicked. And so we are told, or uh, we are asked by the writer of Psalms that we watch our ways, we observe closely our ways, that we will keep our tongue, hold, we hold our tongue, 
not to say anything that will be sinful. Job's wife did not watch her tongue. She just spoke aimlessly by telling her husband, oh, just curse God because of the pain you are going through. Look, he has left you alone. And now children, as children of God, children who study the word of God, we need to know that we are to watch out every word that we speak with our mouths. And then there is also another word, hard word there, that, uh, that I will put a muscle. A muscle is something that is uh, put in, in the mouth or on the, on the mouth while you are in the presence. You know, you can decide, like now, we have our mask, this mask. We are using it to cover our mouth so that we will not uh, inhale or breathe in the virus. So even here in this uh, memory verse, we are told when you are in, in the presence of people, take care of each and every word that is coming out of your mouth. And that's why we are saying that we put a muzzle. Don't speak anything anyhow. And if you do that, you will restrain all. I will restrain my speech, speech, and I will be careful to know which words is coming out of my mouth. And the word that is coming from my mouth is it something that will help other people? Is it something that will benefit my friends? Now, with this memory verse, David waited for so long to become a king. But he suffered. He was betrayed by his own son, Absalom. Every time when we don't check out our, the words that we are giving out or we are saying, oh, we intend to betray our friends. We intend to expose our friends, our family, our, our relatives to the bad people. And so, children, we should be careful of each and every word that we are saying. And that one, children, bring, brings us to the end of our lesson today. And I want us to close down again by saying this memory verse, all of us together. When you are at home, please tell mommy, tell daddy that you want to do the memory verse together with them. And this is how we need to do it. Psalms chapter number 39, verse 1, it says, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. And by doing that, children, you will avoid sin and everything we do, we will make our God happy. So children, God bless you. May we learn to put our mouth or to control our each and every word that comes from our mouth so that we can praise God and we will maintain our relationship with God and with all the people that are allowed us. So God bless you as you continue listening to us and until we meet next time, may God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that we need to control each and every words that come out of our mouth. And by doing this, we will keep a good relationship with you and also with other people. Be with us, Lord, as we pray. For this is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.